There is an epidemic across the country, people skipping out on paying their fare. The agency has estimated fare evasion costs at least $500 million a year. It is spending $1 million a month for more than 200 unarmed private security guards. Today, we're going to show you what New York City is doing about fare evasion and just how bad it's gotten underground. For anyone who's ridden the subway daily, you'll see people evading fares all sorts of ways. Typically, it's either hop over, duck under, something called back cocking where they try to shake this and slip through, or the most common, opening up the emergency exit gates. In May, the MTA came up with a famous 124 page report on fare and toll evasion. The MTA estimates it lost $285 million in 2022 to subway fare evasion alone, or an average of 400,000 riders a day not paying. Also, 45% of fare evasion occurred as people walked through open emergency exit gates, which led the city to add unarmed security to literally block the subway emergency gates. The transit authority employs some 200 private unarmed uniformed security guards in 14 stations whose main mission is to deter people from entering the subway through large metal exit doors known as slam gates. Now I've seen it for myself. There are people who see the unarmed security blocking the emergency exit door. They'll simply go around in the turnstile and hop it. It is gonna cut down on some opportunistic fare evasion, but definitely not all of it. The top recommendation of the whole report was to get rid of turnstiles altogether and replace them with tall, motorized plexiglass doors. This should both improve the customer experience and reduce fare evasion. Very Variations on this approach have been implemented already in major transit systems around the world, from Amsterdam to Paris, New Jersey, San Francisco. You've seen the artist's renderings here at Sutton Boulevard, Archer Ave, connected to JFK Airport in Jamaica. This is the first prototype in action. This could be the future of New York City subways. As you can see, they're definitely under construction. It seems like there's a lot of confusion with tourists and how to use it, because you could use a Metro card or you could tap with Omni. This is barn door style. This is not a turnstile. It opens up and actually, I would say this is perfect if you have luggage or a stroller or a wheelchair. This is a dream come true. But will it actually stop fare evasion? Well, let's take a closer look. I actually think uh, it's a little slower. People are kind of struggling with this. Yeah, the flow is definitely slower here. <laughs> this is interesting because at Sutton Boulevard, one half of the station has the old subway turnstiles, and then the other side is the future. So you can see the past and future of New York City subways in one station here. Uh, actually doing it about the new gates. Yeah, it's, in it's interesting, but it's like, it's supposed to stop fare evasion, but I could totally see people just following each other in, you know? They're not gonna be able to hop over. That won't be, they could crawl under if they want, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if you want to crawl into there. You gotta be desperate. <laughs> you gotta be real desperate. I was telling somebody, I, I saw this like in, um, Europe and Paris and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. In London, yeah. you see these gates and the New yeah. York City is always so behind. And I'm saying, okay, we'll see if they if you got anyone who's got the <laughs> to jump over it. I haven't seen anybody jump yet. <laughs> okay. Take care. Staring at the door, I don't think anybody is going to be gallant enough to hurdle it. Maybe if you have a running start, you're very athletic. Crawling under, also kind of icky. But where I see potential problems here is something called piggybacking where the gate opens and somebody just follows a stranger in. I don't think this is going to stop that, but I do think it could cut down a fare evasion a bit. Didn't you get that? <laughs> or you could just run, you know? <laughs> 8th Avenue Penn Station is going to be the next place that's going to be having these experimental turnstiles. They are seeing how these work. This is not 100% the future. Just some testing going on. Remember, the more effort it takes, 
to evade paying, the less people are going to do it. And the MTA, well, they even agree with that. If someone is a determined fair evader, I think that's going to be tough to, uh, to beat under any circumstance. But I think the vast majority of folks are not. Now, you may be wondering, what is the penalty for fare evasion? It's a Class A misdemeanor, also known as theft of services, and can be punished by up to one year in jail. However, the fine is usually less than $500. I've personally heard of people getting tickets for it, but I've never known anyone who's been arrested for it. But in theory, you could be. And according to these stats, 1,142 people were arrested in Q3 of 2023 for fair evasion. There are even some that cite broken windows police theory of why stopping fair evasion is a good idea. Now that academic theory states that signs of disorder in a neighborhood like a broken window encourages petty crime and leads to more serious crime. And according to this New York Post article, of the 2,502 people cuffed for fair beating this year, 1,136 or just over 45% were already being sought for arrest when they tried to hit the free ride on the city's transit system, according to disturbing new NYPD data obtained by the Post. Many fare beaters also came strapped with more than 200 caught carrying deadly weapons, including 13 guns and over 200 knives. That doesn't seem like the direction the city is trying to go with this. They're stating publicly that they want to save money. That is the number one factor here. What about crime overall on the subway? Well, statistically speaking, crime's actually down underground. Transit crimes are down 2.4% from last year, although still up 30% in the last two years. And you may have seen me announce this on another video, but there's a new RoboCop policing the subways. The K5 robotic cop has been patrolling Times Square 42nd Street Station as part of a pilot program. The K5 will record video footage for authorities to review in case of emergency or crime. It's also equipped with various security features, including a button that will allow New Yorkers to connect to a live person for questions, report suspicious activity, or request emergency assistance. During this pilot program, the robot will operate from midnight to 6 a.m., focusing on the main station area, not the platform. And if you've walked by, it is always accompanied by an NYPD officer, and Mayor Adams has said, the big reason for it is it's a lot cheaper than having an actual police officer down there. Is it going to stop crime? Is it gonna stop fare evasion? I don't know at this point, but it has definitely been a big amusement for people that have seen this huge robotic cop at the Times Square station, you may see more of them in the future. The subway fare has gone up to $2.90 since August 20th. Was fare evasion a big part of that? I think it factored in, but New York will never be able to completely eliminate fare evasion unless they had police at every single station in uniform arresting people for it. What this is attempting to do is save the city money. Will it work? Well. Tell me down below in the comments. I'm curious your opinion. Now that you know about fare evasion, in this video here, we show you how to survive taking the New York subway. We break it down step by step. Head here next.